Good morning again, grade 9. We will now have our science 9, a continuation of photosynthesis. Actually, this is the end part of the photosynthesis, the importance of photosynthesis, and the introduction of cellular respiration. Simply because the product of photosynthesis is the raw material for cellular respiration. Again, the product of photosynthesis is the raw material for cellular respiration. I tend not to include Again, the cellular respiration in the major exam, in your first quarterly exam, simply because it's quite complicated and we need a lot of time to, to digest the topic. I don't want you to, be, to, to take the exam without fully understand the concept or the topic. But that is not me. Okay. As per an update with your exam, let me check on the quarterly exam coverage. Okay, science is quite long. We, we, we did tackle a lot, that is why. So for the quarterly exam, science nine, we have respiratory system, circulatory system, a touch of it. The pharynx, larynx, lungs, the breathing mechanism, the inhalation and exhalation. Okay. The heart, okay, the blood vessels, blood pressure, okay, the components of blood, pulmonary and systemic circulation, blood tracing, you have the chloroplasts, stages of photosynthesis, light-dependent reactions, light-independent reactions, photosystem, and ATP synthesis. Okay, ATP synthesis is actually the product of the light-independent reactions or the photosynthesis. How do we synthesize ATP in the process? Those are the coverage. And your exam is quite 60 items only. So most probably you will have your um your the the um the, the filed or the twisted exam. And for the exam, you have also blood tracing and uh, labeling, heart labeling. So hopefully you can you can familiarize the, the parts of the heart. Okay, internal, external. What else? Uh, for the photosynthesis, I included bits of them. Okay. But the actual um, illustration of the cycles will be in the second quarter. Okay. I will include that one in the second quarter first. Second quarter, uh, major exam and mastery. So it is included in the major exam, mastery and first quarterly, uh, second quarterly exam. Okay. I will move it forward so that we will we will digest the topic more. Okay. The primary product of photosynthesis is glucose, your sugar, that is C6H12O6, C carbon 6, H hydrogen 12, O oxygen 6. Okay, that is actually the primary product of photosynthesis. Are you still with me? Yes. Okay. Glucose is used by plant cells to make organic compounds like fats, proteins, and water-soluble sugars like maltose. Malt, maltose is a sugar from your malt. And sucrose is your table sugar. Okay. Plants need glucose for growth. On the other hand, animals need carbohydrate, fats, and proteins as sources of energy for various metabolic processes. This is the reason why your sugar is a stored energy. Okay. When you feel weak, when you feel um, if you don't have energy or after working out or after walking, you feel like you're weak, all you have to do is to put your body or, or generate sugar. How? You, you ingest sugar like candies and all. Okay? This is how we get our energy from the sugar. Okay? We, will break, we will break down the sugar in order for us to use it in the cellular respiration. Photosynthesis provides abundant supply of oxygen in the atmosphere for the organisms on Earth simply because oxygen is actually, um, it is not abundant in the, in the Earth. Okay? We have a limited supply of oxygen. That's why we need to create or we need to produce oxygen. Oxygen, which is a, a byproduct of photosynthesis. It is not a product, but a byproduct. 
Okay? When you say a byproduct, it is a what? An excess. What else? Talking about byproduct. Okay? Uh, okay? Other term for byproduct? Rabbi? Other term for byproduct? Sir? Other term for byproduct? Because oxygen is a byproduct of photosynthesis. When you say byproduct, what comes into your mind? Secondary. Secondary? Yes, correct. Other term. Okay, so that we can digest it more. When we when we're talking about when we're talking about oxygen is a byproduct of photosynthesis. What comes into your mind when you hear the word byproduct? Not needed. Waste, sir. Again, Ravi. Waste. It could be. It could be a waste because you eliminated that one in the process. Again, oxygen is a byproduct of photosynthesis simply because it is not needed. So it needs to be eliminated. Okay? It's a fundamental to cellular respiration. So because we are aerobic organisms, you see aerobic, we are uh, an organism that uses oxygen to live or oxygen to, to do metabolic processes. So we are concluded or we are included in the aerobic organisms. Okay. Because we are aerobic organisms, we consume a lot of oxygen. This is also the reason why if somebody collapses, okay, please take note of this. I already um, rescued one in the verge of death. Um, if somebody collapses in the middle of um, a lot of people, meaning to say, if he or she is in the middle of surrounded by a lot of people or populated um, area, you need to isolate that person. Why? Because those organisms or those people also consume a lot of oxygen. That is the reason why. Remember that we have a limited supply of oxygen. So, Tendency is he or she might not cope up and he might die or she might die because of oxygen starvation and uh, the brain will just die because of the lack of oxygen. That is actually the, that is actually the case. Okay? You need to isolate the person and perform the CPR, okay? cardiopulmonary resuscitation in order for him or her to survive, or else he might die. Anyway, let's continue, okay? Oxygen, which is a product of photo, a byproduct of photosynthesis, is a fundamental to cellular respiration and equally essential life-sustaining function of animal cells, okay? In, in this process, the energy stored in the adenosine triphosphate, or ATP, molecules is released as readily available form of energy for all life-sustaining functions of cells. Remember that we consume the ATPs, okay? We consume the ATPs, how? Okay, by converting ATP into ADP, okay? If photosynthesis has photophosphorylation, okay, converting ADP into ATP, we animals, okay, perform cellular respiration by converting ATP into ADP in the process, okay? This is the main reason why ATP is considered as the energy currency of the cell. We gain energy through ATPs. The normal concentration of carbon dioxide, a raw material of photosynthesis, is maintained because of photosynthesis. Why? An excessive amount of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere can cause can cause an increase in global temperature, a condition known as global warming, okay? We are actually exhaling carbon dioxide in the process, okay? Because carbon dioxide is the, what? Product of, one product of photosynthesis, one product of cellular respiration. So because we're exhaling carbon dioxide, the plants actually absorb the carbon dioxide in the process, okay? supposed to be, but we are creating a lot of carbon dioxide 
if we are creating a lot of carbon dioxide in the process, tendency is there is global warming. Why? Why, sure. What's with the carbon dioxide emissions? Okay, carbon dioxide is one of the um, greenhouse gas. Okay, you know already about greenhouse gases, right? Are you familiar with the greenhouse gas or greenhouse gases? Yes. 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 Because yes. carbon dioxide is a greenhouse gas, it can cause greenhouse effect. Picture sure what's with the greenhouse effect. Again, I already illustrated one example. The greenhouse effect is actually no, used for plants. Just give me a minute, all right? All right, let's continue. Again, because of this um, carbon dioxide emission, the massive, when we say massive, massive carbon dioxide emissions, we're creating a lot of carbon dioxide that the balance or the equilibrium in the ecosystem becomes, becomes unbalanced. They cannot actually accommodate a lot of those. Okay, the tendency is it will just store or it will just remain in the atmosphere and causing global warming. This is the main problem. This is a global phenomena, okay? Talking about the emissions. We are actually creating a lot of those, okay? That is the main reason. On the other hand, a drop in the concentration of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere can cause decrease in global temperature, okay? Since carbon dioxide keeps the earth warm and livable. Okay. We actually need, I am not telling you that um, we don't need this greenhouse gas. We need it in order for us to survive. We need heat. Okay. This is the reason why um, when you are observing your body, it is warm. When you are observing, if you are going to observe a, a dead person, I have already handled a lot dead person. I even dissected one, it is cold, okay? The warm body indicates that we need heat. Yes, I already tried one when I was still in college. We dissected one and it is really cold. It is cold, to tell you honestly. And talking about the weight, it is also heavy. The human body is heavy itself. So again, talking about heat, again, we need heat, okay? Our, our body is like a machine. Okay, we're talking about machineries here. It produces heat, okay? The normal body temperature is 37.5, 37, 37.5, okay? Below 37, 36.5 or 36, is considered as hypothermia. Hypothermia is the case wherein your body becomes cold, okay, because of certain conditions. Our body also is protecting us against foreign invaders through heat, okay? We tend to rise our temperature, so we have fever, in order for us to isolate the foreign invaders in our body. That is really the case. So you'll be protected by your immune system because of heat. That is the main reason why. Okay, let's move now to cellular respiration. The very huge topic. It is really big and it is really complicated also. Okay, energy enters the ecosystem as sunlight and comes out as heat. 
Okay? In this process, organic compounds essential to life are recycled. Cells require energy from the environment for their functions, like synthesis of essential organic compounds, passing of substances across membranes or movements, and reproduction. We actually use we, we do cellular respiration in order to perform metabolic processes, reproduction, what else? Synthesis of essential organic compounds, which is needed by your body, okay? Your vitamins, your minerals. The primary source of energy on earth is sun. Primary, simply because I already discussed this one. Did I discuss about chemosynthesis? Everybody? Are you still with me? Yes, sir. Okay, did I discuss chemosynthesis? I don't remember it, sir. Okay. Let's discuss chemosynthesis. Why sun is the primary source, not the ultimate source? Before, when I was still in, in elementary, my science teacher oh, keeps on telling us that the sun is the ultimate source. That is why. Okay. But upon checking, because of um, the rise of technology, scientists discovered that there are organisms that fed on chemicals rather than sun. They synthesize chemicals rather than photons. Okay. It is actually found, or they are they are actually found in the sea mounts, in the sea floor. Okay. There, there are a lot of volcanic activities in the seafloor. This is the main reason also why your, your seafloor is, is spreading until now. It is still spreading until now. Okay. So they found out that there are a lot of bacteria living in the sea mounts that consume or fed on chemicals. Okay. They perform chemosynthesis rather than photosynthesis. So it is not now or sun now is that the ultimate source, when we say ultimate, no other sources, but rather the primary source of energy. Okay? The chloroplasts of plant cells capture and convert light energy from the sun into chemical energy in the form of organic compounds like carbohydrates in the process called photosynthesis. Okay? Again, photosynthesis, it converted, again, it converts and, and capture the photon, okay, from the sun to chemical energy in the in the form of glucose or carbohydrate is the, the higher form. But the basic form is glucose or sugar in the process of light independent reactions. Okay. In contrast, the mitochondria of animal cells use the organic compounds to generate energy in the form of ATP in the process of cellular respiration. Okay? The energy of organic compounds is stored in the chemical bonds of their atoms. By the way, the product of photosynthesis, again, is, I discussed this a while ago, I already discussed this one, the product of photosynthesis, okay, which is your sugar, your carbohydrates, your C6H of O6, again, is the raw material for cellular respiration. That is why. The energy of organic compound is stored in the chemical bonds of their atom, chemical bonds of ATP. Again, remember that your ATP is adenosine triphosphate. Okay? Cellular respiration is the process by which organic compounds like glucose are broken down, generating energy in the form of ATP and releasing carbon dioxide and water. We're releasing carbon dioxide in the process and water. Cell organelle involved in the cellular respiration. Let's take a look at what, what organelle is involved in the cellular respiration. The organelle involved in the cellular respiration is the mitochondria. Okay? Mitochondria, it's plural. Okay? If it is singular, mitochondrion. Okay? Mitochondrion comes from the Greek words mitos, which means thread, and chondrion, or chondria, which means granule. Okay? A mitochondrion is a membrane-enclosed organelle found in the cytoplasm of most eukaryotic cells. 
Are you familiar with the eukaryotic cell? Eukaryotes and prokaryotes? Yes. Okay, yes, what is prokaryotes? Anybody? Let's have Ravi. What is prokaryotes? I'm familiar Ravi? with it, sir, but I'm not sure about it. But I think okay, um, it's one of the right, cells, right. sir, in the... One of the cells in... 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 Yeah, I forgot, sir. How about others? Jillian and EJ. Prokaryotes. I'm not familiar. Sir. Okay. I think um one of the one of the cells contains like this some sort of uh, of a nucleus. Then meanwhile the other doesn't. Yes. Not sure. Yeah. There is a point, Jillian. You you had a point. Okay. Talking about eukaryotic and prokaryotic, yo means two, karyon means nucleus. These are organisms with two nucleus. Okay, we're talking about sir, what is with the true nucleus? Okay, if an organism or if a cell has a true nucleus, it should be bounded or surrounded with a nuclear membrane. And the organelles should be nuclear or sh should be covered with a membrane. Like this, the, um, the ER, the rough endoplasmic reticulum, the smooth endoplasmic reticulum, they're covered with membranes. Okay, The ribosomes, they should be covered with membrane because this is a true cell or true nucleus, a, a cell with a true nucleus. It should be covered with membranes. Okay. On the other hand, when you say prokaryotic, I think um, your teacher, Jillian, passed on the, the information to, to you and the rest. But you tend to forget it. You tend to forget. Talking about prokaryotic cell, these are cells that has that is not have a nuclear bound membrane or or without membranes okay like for example we're talking about bacteria if you're going to observe the bacteria it doesn't contain or it did it has no um nucleus at all because when we're talking about nucleus it should be membrane bound okay now cover it it should be covered so that it can be um, distinguished as a nucleus but in the case of prokaryotic, when you say pro, it is primitive, a primitive type of cell. Because it is primitive, okay, it doesn't contain a nuclear bound membrane. Okay, the absence of this nuclear bound membranes or the absence of membranes found in the organelles can make a cell becomes prokaryotic, just like your bacteria. And it doesn't contain DNA at all. Because if it is DNA again, it, it, it doesn't contain a nucleus rather at all. But it has DNA. Because there, are, there is an absence. There is the absence of a nuclear bound membrane. Instead of calling it as a nucleus, we, we tend to call it as a nucleolus in the process. So again, what are the differences? When, when you're talking about eukaryotic cell, it is a true nucleus. It has a true nucleus because the, the nucleus there are nuclear bound. It has a membrane, surrounded by a membrane. Okay, But in a, eukary in a prokaryotic cell, it's a, it's a different thing because it lacks, Okay, it doesn't contain a membrane that covers the nucleus. Hence, it doesn't have nucleus, but rather the genetic materials are scattered in the cytoplasm of the cell. Okay, because it is scattered, it is called nucleus rather than nucleus. Right? Am I making that clear? 
Well, sir. And this is actually discussed by my teacher when I was still in grade six again, under biology. This is really great. Why? These are the bases. Do not forget this one. Okay. You can always ask me with regards to um, sciences, science concepts. You can always, like my previous students are always asking me about this. You know, the basic concepts of biology. These are the basic concepts of biology. Biology and talking about the cells. Again, you will be um, with these concepts all throughout, even in senior high and in college, under Gen Bio 1 and Gen Bio 2. Senior high, you will have your, if you're going to take STEM, you will have your Gen Bio 1 and Gen Bio 2. And if you're going to take the, the different um, area or the different strand, you will have your earth science and earth and life science. So still, you will actually encounter this, these terms. In college, the same. If you have bio one or gen bio one, still, you will encounter this. Or in the medical field, right? Please take note that these are the basic or the fundamental um, concepts in biology. Let's move forward. Do you have any questions so far? You still have a minute left. None, sir. Okay. Mitochondria are generally round shape, round in shape, and range in the size of 0.5 to 10 um, micron. Mitochondria are present in eukaryotic cells. However, they are found high concentrations in animal muscles because you need a lot of oxygen and a lot of ATPs or energies in muscle cells, which require more energy. 